Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of data sets and asking the question, is this data linear? Well, let's find out. So, a linear data set says that as the x value increases, there should be a constant rate of change or a constant increase or decrease in y values. So what we want to what we want to do is try to identify if there is a constant rate of change in y or if that change kind of fluctuates a little bit. So here's what I like to do. I like to look at my numbers that are just going up by 1. Now typically in a data set we have some numbers that are a little larger, maybe some gaps, that kind of thing. I want to look at these numbers that are just going up by 1 each time. See how much difference is there in my outputs whenever my input is just going up by 1. So let's see. Between 1 and 2, my x goes up by 1, and my y goes up by how many? Well, 5 to 9 says my y is going up by 4. So now, every time I go up by 1 here, for example, between 2 and 3 I go up by 1, and between 3 and 4 I go up by 1, I should see a change of plus 4 in these as well if the data is linear, because I should always have that same amount of change. Well, between 9 and 13, there's 4 difference there, so that worked. It went up by 4. And then between 13 and 17, guess what again? It went up by 4 as well. So I've established a constant rate of change at this point. Every time my x goes up by 1, my y goes up by 4. I should still see that constant rate of change, even in some of these larger input values. So let's think about this. Between 4 and 10, x is going up by 6. So how much should my y be going up? Well, if it goes up 4 for one change, then for 6 changes, it should be 6 times 4, or 24, right? It should be going up by 24 here. What's the difference between 17 and 41? Well, maybe you can mentally do that. Maybe you toss it in a calculator, but guess what? It's 24. So that fit yet again. Now let's do our last one. Between 10 and 20, there's a change of 10, exactly. So if for every one that it goes up, it goes up by four, then if it went up by 10, it should go up by 10 times four, or 40. And take a look at that, it did. So this tells me that I have a linear data set because I was able to accurately surmise exactly how much this data set should go up every single time, and it did that. It did what I expected. It was a predictable set of data. It was linear. So yeah, this one is. Let's take a look at the second one. We're going to go a little faster this time. So between 1 and 2, there's a gap of 1. 2 and 3, there's a gap of 1. 3 and 8 goes up by 5. And 8 and 11 goes up by 3. So I'm going to take, it look, take a look at my uh, first couple where it's just going up by 1. Well, it went up by 1 between 1 and 2. And between 1 and 2 on the outputs, or the y values, it went up by 2. So for every change in 1 in the x, there should be a change of 2 in the y. So let's check next. Between 2 and 3, it went up by 1. And 4 and 6, it went up by 2. Good, we're still on track. Now it went up 5. Between 3 and 8, there was an increase of 5. So if it's supposed to go up by 2 for every increase of 1, then for an increase of 5, well, 5 times 2 means it should go up by 10. Well, what's happening here? Between 6 and 18, that's an increase of 12. Is that what should be happening if this data set was constant and linear? No. That's, that's not what it should be doing. So that means, uh-oh, that's not linear. That breaks our mold. So this is a non-linear equation. It might be close. I mean, it should have been 16. It's not that far off of where it would be, but if it's not perfect, it's not linear. So we couldn't say that about this one. All right, so that's how we do this process. That's the way we want to look at it. And I know I skipped that last one, but after we prove one wrong, the others don't matter. 
If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys.